Hey everyone, it's Wes, and I am here to introduce the first episode review of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, episode one, obviously, which is entitled Day of the Dumpster. Now, this episode aired back in August of 1993, so the 90s are full on in this episode. Like, really, it just screams 90s, 90s, 90s. I am a product of the 90s, and it's quaint in that way, especially going through all this 90s nostalgia that we're going through currently, but wow wow it is almost obnoxiously 90s so anyway the episode starts off you have the astronauts on the moon and then they find what they call a space dumpster which didn't really look like a dumpster to me it looked like you know like a big canister type thing i mean if i had to choose a word to describe it i would say it's more like a coffee can but you know that's i'm not the writer of this episode so uh, but anyway the what is it space dumpster has Rita inside of it and all of her henchmen, Goldar, Squat, Babu, Finster, all of them. And she's like, ah, oh, yeah, after 10,000 years, I'm free, yay. And claims that her goal is to destroy the nearest planet, which is Earth. Now, I don't know if they fully thought that out at that point, that, you know, she and, well, I guess it comes up later, but she and Zordon had her big war 10,000 years ago, da 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 And I don't know if she's just being, like, poetic, and I'm going to destroy the nearest planet, which is Earth, or if she, you know, her whole goal is Earth, obviously, because that's where Zordon's at, but I digress. Anyway, you cut over to the juice bar, and you have all five of the main teenagers doing things that are very distinctly 90s, extreme sportsy activities. You know, you have Jason doing karate, Zach doing karate as well, and they're just, you know, hanging out doing their thing. Billy comes in looking like a big nerd with his karate outfit. That's, you know, that's pretty funny. And Trini and Kimberly are doing their gymnastics. So very 90s. And somehow they're all still color-coded with the ranger colors, even before they become rangers. You know, that's very, very subtle. Yeah, very, very subtle. Uh, obviously, hijinks and Sue and Bulk and Skull come in, and they try to get dates with Kimberly and Trini, and they, uh, they take them down pretty easily. You know, Bulk and Skull go down pretty quick. And then it cuts over to Rita talking about, you know, making putty patrollers and all that, you know, whatever. And then Jason and Billy are in their karate class in the midst of it, and Billy's clearly showing that he doesn't do much physical activity. Bolt comes to the class and demands Jason teaches him how to beat people up, er, because if you haven't realized already, I'm a bully. Blarg, blarg. And Bolt makes a fool out of himself trying to do the, uh, I think it was the spinning kick, and they all laugh at him, of course. But I have to say, Skull, Skull is the real hero in this episode his reactions i think man that guy that i think it's jason narvey who's the actor for skull he is just really on point with his reactions you know he's not given a whole lot to work with honestly but i really enjoy it whenever he's in the episodes just looking at his facial reactions and just in general uh then the five are all sitting at a ta table talking about oh billy you have so much potential da 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 and honestly you, you look at these five teenagers and you have to wonder how in the world did they become friends like, really, they are all so different from each other. I mean, yeah, it just doesn't make sense that they're all already friends, which I think would make a really good uh, backstory to cover in the Power Rangers comic, like, before they became Rangers. How in the world did they find each other? Like, why are they hanging out with each other? I think the Power Rangers comic could do really well with that. But then Earthquake happens, everybody's scared, uh, cuts to the command center where Zordon wakes up and asks Alpha to teleport five overbearing emo over emotional humans because da 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 da, Rita's out, and Alpha's like, oh no, not teenagers, da 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 da, which is kind of a, kind of a grung worthy moment, honestly. It's like, oh, overbearing and over emotional humans, da 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 da, teenagers. Huh? Okay, but the five are teleported to the command center, they meet Alpha and Zordon, get the lowdown on Rita and what Power Rangers are. But they are thoroughly skeptical, and they just decide, you know, uh, see ya. We're, we're, not, we're not all for this. And they leave the awesome command center, which I guess recently I just learned that it was actually, like, a real building in California that I'd really like to visit. And then they try to walk back to Angel, Angel, Angel Grove, and they're suddenly ambushed by putties. Ooh, the very, very scary putties going... Rrr, rrr, rrr. They fight the putties and realize that they're just too much for them, so they tr decide to try out their morphing, which tends to give them an influx of knowledge on how to rate, operate their powers and their zords, and they're immediately teleported to, you know, where Goldar is in the city, causing destruction. And I don't know, I like that concept of the ranger powers, you know, giving them all the information they need, you know, the fighting knowledge, ability to use the weapons, the zords, the powers, all that. And 
I, I wonder how much that will transfer to the new movie when it comes out because you see them morphing in the trailers, but how much are they going to know to pilot their Zord? Are they going to go through a steep learning curve? I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I wonder, I wonder if they'll even bring it up. Uh, they combine their Zords when Goldar becomes gigantic. The background music that plays. Oh my goodness. Like, I just love all the music in the show. They, if there's one thing that the Power Rangers, the original season, got right, it is the music. Ron Wasserman is just a legend, and he can make every single scene in the show interesting just by the music he does. Uh, the main theme starts when they initiate the battle mode for the Megazord, and they fight for a little bit. Then Jason summons the Power Sword, and Goldar's like, ah, peace out, guys. I'm out, man. I ain't dealing with this. And he just leaves. And they consider that a loss. Well, at least, you know, Goldar considers that a loss. I don't know. I think he could have take, taken them. They just brought out the sword. They didn't actually use the sword. These are brand new rookie rangers. Why do you think they're going to be able to use a sword very well? Yeah, they get all this knowledge, but come on. You know, all five of them operating together with a sword, you know, using the sword. I don't know. But he ditches. And the episode ends with the five of them listening to Zordon's three basic rules for being a Power Ranger, which uh, at the top of my head I can't remember. Uh, don't escalate the battle, don't tell anybody you're Power Rangers, and don't use your powers for personal gain. Something like that. And they do their big Power Rangers huddle chant thing at the end, where they put all their hands in. But overall, it was, you know, it was a slightly rushed episode. But, you know, I feel like it was satisfying enough. You got to know them well enough, just by the beats hit throughout the episode, that you, you kind of see who they are. And you can see the story potential for the different characters. You know, you, Billy's total geek. He's got some room to grow. Jason's kind of like the wiser leader type who needs to learn how to you know, lead the team. Uh, Zach, he's, he's fun-loving, but he was the first one that wanted out of this whole thing, so maybe he likes to duck responsibility? I don't know. Uh, Trini obviously just kind of goes with it, you know? Seems to follow Jason around and really likes to hang out with Billy. Kimberly is, you know, that cheerleader stereotype, but, you know, she'll probably have to grow eventually. I already know that she will, but, you know, just by this first episode, you can see that there's potential. Uh, they blended the Japanese footage as well as they could, I think. Uh, the parts with the viewing globe and Rita going around and causing destruction, I feel like you couldn't really have done that as easily if you just cut to it as the footage itself. So seeing it from the viewing globe, I think, kind of helped a lot because, you know, in the Japanese version, she's clearly a witch and she's going around on her bike flying around, kind of like the, uh, I guess the, the Wicked Witch imagery from Wizard of Oz was in play there. Uh, but man, there is there is a lot of 90s imagery and a lot of 90s attitude in this. And, you know, just, it, it was nice to revisit. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, next few episodes are like because I haven't watched them in a while. So yeah, that's the first episode of Power Rangers Season 1, Day of the Dumpster. And yeah, till next time, uh, let's see. May the power protect you. Goodbye. <laughs>